Hey guys, it's Zachary and welcome to Helmet Hit Zone. We're nearing the end of the whole circuit breaker lockdown period and I will get a haircut, so I'd stop looking like a Califair from 80s Hong Kong drama serials. Anyway, we're here today to talk about vlogging, quite specifically Sony's very first dedicated compact vlogging camera, the ZV-1. Ooh. When Sony approached me about a brand new camera, I went to do some digging around the usual Sony rumors websites. Not a lot of information out there. Maybe a leaked picture here, two or three lines of specs there. Very hush hush. But rumor has it that Sony has been developing an RX100 for vloggers. So I said yes, signed some NDA documents and a couple of days later this arrived in my doorstep. So we're going to do this together and go through and see what Sony put into the ZV-1. Is it just a rebranded RX100 or is this a vlogger's dream come true? There's actually a lot of things you can get from the box itself because there's a bunch of like key specs that's already listed here. So the ZV-1 has a 1 inch type uh, stacked CMOS sensor, 20.1 megapixel. It runs on the Bionz X image processor, has a 24 to 70 mm zoom lens, f1.8 to f2.8, hybrid autofocus, uh, face detect autofocus, 315 AF points. Um, now these features are from the RX100 Mark 5A, real-time IAF, that's from the RX100 Mark 7, a microphone jack, obviously, since this is a, supposed to be a dedicated video camera. Now, the um, thing I want to talk about is that it seems to be like a mix between the RX100 Mark 5A and the RX100 Mark 7. And I kind of feel that Sony didn't just take the Mark 7 and then created this camera out of that because that would make it a bit too out of reach for the average consumer. They want to also target people who want to step up from a smartphone. So um, in terms of AF points, you've got the specs from the Mark 5A rather than the Mark 7. The Mark 7 had more AF points. It has 357 I think. It also doesn't need such a long zoom lens. The Mark 7 had a 24 to 200 mm zoom although it was also f2.8 to f4.5 uh, to compensate for the longer length. So a shorter length is sufficient for vlogging because your camera is mostly within arm's length and a brighter lens works for it as well. looks really like RX100. Battery packed NPBX1. This is also the same lithium ion battery pack as the RX100. Micro USB. Okay, now, now you guys know my thoughts about this. It's 2020. I, I think that everything should have gone to USB-C by now, but that's where we're at. And no wind filter, fluffy wind filter. So yeah, the first thing I noticed taking this out of the box was this like mesh design on top. I, I thought this was like a pop-up um, lamp or flash or something, but no, it's, it's a grill. It's actually the mic array. Uh, Sony built in a three capsule high resolution stereo mic array into this camera, which is a testament to a dedication that they want to make this as a video camera, right? It's one of the biggest things about a vlogging camera is good audio. And instead of just having a mic in jack, they've actually built in a pretty good mic as well. And there's a hot shoe and the place where the EVF was on the RX100. So you can have attachments. At first, I thought this was the mic when I was looking at the specs. But this not this is just a wind muffler, and you can slot that into the hot shoe slot. This is a quick test of the built-in mic. This is without the muffler, right? I'm outside, and it's not that windy, but there is a bit of wind. Now this is the second test with the built-in mic with 
the fluffy wind muffler on. So, yeah. On the right side, a lot of things have changed. There's on-off button. Um, there's a huge record button as well as your shutter and telephoto like zoom toggle. There is a C1 button. There's another mode button. So what's changed here? Two very big things. There is a dedicated record button for video. So right out of the box, you turn it on. You can just press video, start recording. You don't have to do anything. Um, it loses the huge mode dial from the RX100 Mark 7. Instead, you have like a mode button. And I noticed you also don't have focus ring, a zoom ring as well. So there's that. Um, it looks obviously very similar to the RX100, but now it has a grip, front grip, as well as a thumb grip. And I guess that's pretty cool. For an RX100, it's supposed to be a photography, a still camera, especially with the EVF. Most people carry it like this, right? Um, but as a video camera, you don't actually need to put it that close. You're, you're either holding it out or you know, you're shooting yourself. So having um, actual grip built in is, is pretty cool. And of course, what else is there is a side articulating LCD panel. It goes all the way at the front and about 90 degrees there. So about 270 degrees of articulation um, instead of the flip up lens from the RX100 series. Right, and considering that the mic is on top as well, right? If you put the muffler in, you don't want to flip uh, the LCD on top. Yeah. All right. So on the side, you've got yep, a mic jack, HDMI port, and the USB port. Buttons-wise, yep. So function menu, rotating joystick, and another C2 button. If Sony is building this to be a video-centric camera, then you don't really need still photography features. So you don't need to play with ISO settings, shutter speed, uh, aperture, right? Those are still there and you can still shoot uh, still photos with the ZV-1. It's just that it is more purposely built for video. So whatever default options there are on the ZV-1, it is tuned for video. It's kind of like cars. I mean, you can have the same car with the same engine, but if you tune it differently, different suspension, different tires, gear ratios, whatever, you know, you, you could it, it drives differently. So that's kind of like this camera. The features that have changed or those settings that they've tweaked on the ZV-1 to make it a video specific camera. And if you go into the menu, let's see, uh, specifically for movies. So you can set things like HD, full HD recording, 4K recording. Uh, 4K goes up to 30p. 100 megabits per second, 24p, 100 megabits per second. Uh, it, it really depends on the PAL and NTSC settings. So if you change this to PAL mode, you might see uh, different frames on this, but generally it goes up to 30 frames, 100 megabits per second for 4K. And for full HD, it goes up to 120. On the RX hundreds, the tracking sensitivity is set to standard. On the ZV-1, the tracking AF drive speed is set to fast and the AF tracking sensitivity is set to responsive. Now, these options can also be changed on the RX hundred, except that the default on the RX hundred was one is fast and responsive. So let's test out this face and eye tracking, how fast it is. Yeah, it's got my eye. Let's move around. Oh, okay. It switches between face and eye. Ah. And once it loses track of your eye, it goes back to your face. But if I move slower, 
find Tricky. Find Tricky. Yeah. Steady shot settings for video, you have off, standard, and active. I noticed that they've taken out intelligent active that was available on the RX100 Mark 7. Um, although I don't think that really needs uh, to be changed because most people run on active anyway. The ZV-1 has steady shot for both full HD and 4K. Okay, so I kind of want to test the active steady shot right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep increasing my speed from a walk to a jog to a full on run and see how far it can keep up. So it's walking now. And jogging. And that's run. Yeah. And back to a walk. Active steady shot on full HD, 11 times better than standard. On 4K, active steady shot is 8 times better than standard. That's that is the same as the RX100 Mark 7. Sony's also upgraded their natural skin tone um, algorithms on the ZV-1. According to them, it now makes people look healthier. That's their words. Um, the ZV-1 also has face priority uh, auto exposure. So, you know, in conjunction with um, the face tracking and the eye tracking, is helps vloggers when you're moving around especially from dark to light areas it tries to keep your face as well lit or as level as possible the other thing that the zv1 has which sony has added um, that has carried over from smartphones is that they have now embraced beauty mode the zv1 has what sony calls soft skin effect this is enabled by default there are four options that you can choose in the settings off, low, medium, and high. And by default, it is set to medium. So if you've got your hands on the ZV-1 and you know, just like a smartphone, you kind of figure why are you so smooth, especially for guys, um, you might want to turn that off or set it to low at least. If you remember when I pulled this out of the box, I noticed that there was this extra button on the top plate that's labeled C1. There's also a button at the back that's labeled C2. This is the delete button, but basically C1 and C2 are configurable buttons, but they are by default mapped to these two um, new features. Now C1, it's a bokeh feature. It basically switches between f5.6 and whatever aperture is on your lens at the moment, depending on your zoom range. So between uh, f1.8 to f2.8. So when you're shooting a video, if you just want to blur the background and focus on, on you, on, on, on the host or main subject, that's a button you can choose. To help me illustrate that, I've got my little friends here. Wonder Woman and Police Deadpool. If I press C1, now it's clear. Now it's blur. Now it's clear. Now it's blur. The second button, C2, activates what Sony calls a product showcase setting. And what this does, it basically toggles between eye and face tracking and steady shot, I mean, it turns it off. And that basically helps the ZV-1 focus faster between foreground and background without having to lock on something. All right, if I am shooting this and our friend comes in, hey, focus, me, focus, me. Whoa, that's quick. Focus changes almost instantaneously back and forth. And what if we turn it off? We do the same thing. There you go. Kind of takes it, kind of still able to focus. Oh, okay. Okay, there we go. See? I can notice that um, as long as this doesn't block my face. Right, because it's still locked onto my face, it's still locked onto my eye. I can see the focus there, and as 
and it will never focus on the foreground it will never focus on Deadpool if I do that but if I do block my whole face then it would but just now with face detect turned off once I toggle product showcase the moment I move Deadpool in front of the screen it will immediately focus on Deadpool hmm. so that about sums up all the new features that Sony put into the ZV-1 there are a couple of things I noticed about it just playing around this mic grill on top I mean since it's on the top plate and it's quite large actually attracts a bit of dust gets stuck in like even right now I already can see some specks of dust on it you might want to brush it off um, from time to time so it doesn't get stuck or caked in there over time um, the other thing is that the LCD screen it's touch sensitive but like the RX100 it's not a full touch screen uh, this is also still just a touch focus screen yep yeah, that's that's about it now what does the product showcase setting do? Uh, duh what does the product showcase setting do does do <laughs>